One Planet was sold for six million dollars on Entropia. Do you think the NFT gaming will see that go higher? Find out in this video. So welcome, it's your boy NFG Lino. Um, I'm sure we've all spent a little bit of money on cosmetic items and games, you know, Fortnite, League of Legends, Counter-Strike, you know, some items you can sell, some items you can't sell. Um, and we're going to go into, you know, why that's a good thing and why that may be a bad thing for some games. And we're going to go into NFT games you can start playing today, which are very similar to the games you may have spent money on, which you may not have knew about. So the first one we have is Counter-Strike Global Offensive, otherwise known as CSGO. I'm sure everyone in the Everyone who has a PC has probably played CSGO at one point. Iconic game. Uh, you know, imagine having a chance to own, you know, some of the skins which have sold as NFTs and, and tradable NFTs on a marketplace. Um, a lot of the CSGO skins which are sold are actually sold on external markets such as CSGO Stash. Um, and you can see there's a, a crazy amount spent on some of these skins depending on their rarity. Um, and we have NFT games which have you know, common all the way up to Mythic, and that's no different from the, you know, the methods that CSGO use of their factory new all the way down to Battle Scarred. So CSGO is one of those games that, you know, if you've played on PC, you will understand straight away that, you know, NFT slots straight into it. Now, the only disadvantage that I could see for, for CSGO and the team to, to create NFTs is that they would have to put a max supply on some of the items. Um, and because you put a max supply on the items, you know, you may not be able to sell as many as you as you may originally. However, if you have an integrated marketplace into the game, you could charge a tax every time that that was sold. So there is a huge potential for, for someone like CSGO to come in, create NFTs. Uh, however, Steam have said no to NFTs, so they would have to go into their own launcher. So there's definitely a conversation to be had, but CSGO is one of the games that would absolutely take the market if NFTs are released into the game. So now we're going to look at an alternative on the Wax blockchain called Forge Arena. So this is Forge Arena, uh, at the Forge Arena on Twitter. Uh, you can see a little bit of gameplay footage here. Um, <laughs> you know, it's very similar to CS guy, the uh, CSGO, sorry, the first person shooter. I know the only real difference is, um, obviously it's a different game completely, but they have NFTs that are tradable on the Wax blockchain, and it's the first game of its kind I know that has tradable NFTs, which is actually playable right now. And you can see some of the NFTs there. Uh, you can see knives on the market, different skins, and even like karambits, all with different rarities, similar to the CSGO style. Um, it's a game which I'm invested in. Uh, all you need to do is own a uh, Gen E capsule. They are quite expensive. However, you know, you can actually make skins of that and you can print new NFTs, which you can then sell on the market. So it could be a worthwhile investment to pick one up. Obviously, that's not financial advice, but that's just an investment that I have made. Um, you can see the you can see the gameplay. It looks really clean. Uh, there's a professional scene that's coming over to it, so it's definitely a game you want to be looking at if you want to get involved and play to earn, and maybe you play a game different from CS:GO. You know, we can't talk about NFT games uh, and games that need to be NFT games without talking about Rocket League, uh, a game which many people have sunk many hours into. An amazing game which I know a lot of NFT members really love to their core, and we we all wish that NFTs are in this game, right? Um, I'm sure if you played it, you know about the inventory system and, and the different items which in the game are, are relatively hard to actually trade and make offers with. You have to do trade offers. You can't head over to a marketplace and just trade these items freely, which I feel like is a reason I, I personally have detached from Rocket League maybe a little bit more than, than other games is because I feel like, you know, I want to be able to go to a marketplace and, and use that without going to a third party. So. There are a few third party websites, um, you know, one here is actually called Rocket-League slash items, which just is a database for items, but it can also show you, you know, the prices on the market of the items. Um, you can see that, you know, these are the items that shows you what they are, different clips, and you want to see the final price. Um, and now this would be amazing if it was if it was an NFT, right? Because you could have different rarities and you can see you know, having, a, having a super rare crate on Rocket League it really doesn't hit the same to me anymore knowing that that could be an nft um, that money that i put into the game is kind of hard to take out of the game and i wish it was i wish it was the other way around in terms of rocket league alternatives i'm not sure there are many alternatives on the market right now uh, there are definitely a few games on eve along the racing pattern 
but to make a game such as Rocket League with the physics it has is going to be such a such a challenge that you know I feel like it's quite a long way away from from getting to that point so if you're looking at Rocket League I would love to have NFTs in this game I'm sure you can understand why the inventory system just makes sense and uh, it would be a great way for, for players who've played the game for years to be rewarded for their for their efforts so that's Rocket League next we're going to look at FIFA Ultimate Team Right, so now we're looking at FIFA. Uh, if anyone's played Ultimate Team, they would be aware of the impact that NFTs would have to, to the game, right? It would be such a massive improvement. However, the issue of Ultimate Team, uh, as many people know, is that FIFA comes out every single year. So those NFTs, you know, they kind of defeat the purpose of Ultimate Team because it's about rebuilding a new team every single year. However, there would definitely be some way to, to do it by having, you know, almost like an upgrade system or something something different that the NFTs haven't seen before. Uh, but I can understand that, you know, Ultimate Team is very much a play to win game. And the reason that it does so well and they make so much money is because the people always want to improve their teams. And if there was scarcity on card, then there were certain max supplies which are visible. Um, you know, I feel like it would actually help the game, but they would very much have to limit the amount of money they can make. And that is the last thing a company like EA wants to do. You know, everyone knows EA are very well known for just not giving a toss and just making as much money from their customers as shamelessly, shamelessly as possible, really. So I don't see FIFA ever bringing in NFTs until they are absolutely forced to. But it's not all doom and gloom. Um, you know, there is actually a platform called SoRare. Now, SoRare is actually a very expensive platform. Uh, that Erling Haaland sold for around $200,000. So it's definitely a game for you know larger accounts. But you can also get in on the limited side and you can build a team for maybe $100. Uh, and you can enter that in a fantasy football style. So you don't play a game per se. Your players play and you get points depending on how well they performed that week. And it's free to enter every tournament. But obviously, you have to actually you know finish in a decent position to win a reward. And you also have to spend a decent amount of money to get in. So it may be not the same as Ultimate Team where you can just, you know, work your way up by playing the game. There's definitely that gap between these two projects. But, you know, there is definitely a bridge coming with different NFT projects like Fithium. There's also Club. Um, you know, there's definitely, definitely a lot of potential for football and NFTs. There just needs to be a game which is playable and, and again, making a, a A-grade title such as EA Sports Ultimate Team or FIFA, any of the EA Sports games are so advanced, um, you know, a company to come along and make such a game is going to be such a big task, but Ultimate Team is definitely one that would use NFTs extremely well. So on to number four, there's no way I can not talk about this game as I was a massive fan, I still am a big fan of, of League of Legends, but I don't play it anymore. Um, you know, League of Legends skins are... Uh, they, they make so much money from League of Legends skins. It's, it's almost a joke, right? Riot Games have made so much money from League of Legends that, um, you know, they probably don't know what to do with it at this stage, right? But NFTs would be so great in this game, similar to the CSGO use case, because a lot of people have, you know, really early skins, which would be considered like Genesis or Alpha and NFTs, um, which they just almost can't do anything with. And, and selling NFTs on third-party websites, from what I'm aware, is actually kind of an, a bannable offence. So they have no interest in letting people release funds. It's just about making people spend more. And that's a real problem in the gaming community, which play to earn fixes. But, you know, for, for a game to be as fun as League of Legends and to be as successful as League of Legends, it's going to take a huge amount of investment and a huge amount of knowledge to know what they have done correctly. Uh, because not everyone's going to want to play League of Legends again. It's going to take a different type of game to get to that success point. So League of Legends, um, you know, you can buy skins on the store. There's also been loads of skins, um, like event-specific skins, um, and they have gone for a huge amount of money, like packs, jacks, um, some of the different skins. You know, they are extremely valuable collector items that have utility, and in an NFT world, they would be, you know, $10,000, probably minimum. Um, but obviously on the, you know, some of the skins, people don't play that game anymore and they're just stuck in their account and it's quite sad really because there's a lot of people that would love to have those items but they can't get their hands on it just because of the reasoning that you know Riot Games have no interest in letting people trade within the game so League of Legends is definitely a game where we could see NFTs coming in or a game to even challenge that and, and, and change the meta per se so 
Going on to the last game now, uh, it's going to be a game which I'm sure you know everyone knows about. It's a household name and it's one of the biggest games to ever come on the world. Hey guys, finally. So, World of Warcraft, I mean, where do we start? Wow. Um, I guess, wow. It's, it's just such an amazing game. It's, it's not a game that I've ever actually played a lot in my time. It's something that I know people around me have spent a lot of money into, a lot of time. And it's a game which there already is a huge amount of external marketplaces which trade world of warcraft items and people actually can you know can grind and make a lot of money or maybe back then it would be easier to sell a level 60 account than it would be now um just because of the you know you know the access is a bit different now the internet is so much easier to find how to level up quicker whereas people back then would, would make accounts grind and that would be an income for some people but you know, with games like Diablo and World of Warcraft, any game where you spend a lot of time and you, and you have boss battles, you know, that NFT um, would be like a pack opening. It would be like a pack opening to see what you get. You invest a lot of time and maybe even money to enter that boss battle or a lot of experience cap. And then you get an amazing NFT. That would be you know, game changing and life changing for some people. And they wouldn't need to go onto an external market and do it. And, and there's a lot of risk that goes on the external market. You may not feel safe. You know, it's quite a dodgy transaction. It's maybe not dodgy, but it's a, it's not a transaction you feel comfortable doing. You'd much rather do it in the game or have an NFT, which is in your wallet, to represent the ownership. Um, because unfortunately, the, the 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 long story of these games is they don't want your ownership of. They don't want to give you ownership of the items. They want to make you rent it from them, so that you know you can continuously put more money into the game. Play to earn games change that. They change the level of ownership you can get in games. They give you true ownership of items and even without a game some people some items may still have collectability value you know if a game like you know age of empires had nfts and the original age of empire nfts you know i'd probably try and buy one of them just for the fact that i don't play that game anymore i don't have any interest in playing that game but it meant a lot to me as a kid so that, that reminiscent factor is something that would sell a lot of nfts also the usability of nfts and also the fact that these games are so playable and it will bring up back a lot of interest in these games so that's really the end of the video uh, i hope you guys enjoyed if you guys want to see more of this just let me know um, or if not peace out